yourself our domestic discussions. I am asking you to leave a light on so that we can find our way home. Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> it's been like what? Three, maybe four videos now in the space of the past several days that I've just given up halfway through. Really am beginning to lose my patience with the Rainbow Unicorn Party. In fact, I'm really starting to lose my patience with the majority of these arseholes that make up the Scottish Government, as well as the equivalent down south. But especially when it comes to the Rainbow Unicorn Delegates. You know, my patience is wearing thin. A bit like the top lip in this thin lip fucker, you know? But she's no alone in that department. Oh, no, 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 no. From the ones that spring to mind, Beta Blockford, the other day showing himself to be the fat little fucker that he really is. You know, sitting complicit, like all the rest, when it comes to the covering up of the asylum-seeking grooming gang in Glasgow, while simultaneously salivating when it came to talking about the non-existent gas attack in Syria. I wonder why that was. Well, we all know the real reason he was getting hyped up for that conversation, because of the endless hypothetical possibilities that could have come as a result of, such as the possibility for generating yet more asylum seekers. <laughs> Good to know that he's got his priorities in order. Of course, doing by bidding for Mama Sturgeon, of course. And let's not forget, Derek, my budgets were Shank Mackay, a now suspended member of the Rainbow Unicorn Party, he was caught chatting up little schoolboys, despite the fact that the Rainbow Unicorn Party pretends to pride itself on children and young people's needs, rights and development coming first. Yes, there's been no shortages of cringe-inducing bile from the Rainbow Unicorn delegates as well as down south from the closet lefty Tory party in particular with their now seemingly joint partnership with the Rainbow Unicorn party to part the non-existent manly climate change narrative. How convenient that that's taking place in Glasgow. If the plan was always to have it in the UK, why the fuck is it in Glasgow? Because all we're going to hear, which we have been up until date, is this thin lip dick. The only saving grace to come out of it all where the Rainbow Unicorn delegates are concerned is the fact that the cringe on display time after time it begs belief <laughs> call it comical relief I guess Sturgeon of course wasted no time taking to Twitter to try and imply that of course it was the EU that were behind this only for it to then transpire after the fact that it was the SNP themselves that were responsible for setting up this monstrosity <laughs> And who footed the bill for that, I wonder? Well, we all know who footed the bill for that. Just a very quick one, because on the, um, the 31st, the, the Scottish Government projected a, a message onto the, the, this building that uh, we understand that the Commission kind of didn't know about, about you know, the EU leaving a, a light on for Scotland. Um, so just to really confirm that this is not any kind of parallel negotiation with the Scottish Government or anything... Uh, like that because you know some people might see it back in the UK and sort of wonder you know the purpose of such meetings. In relation to the message projected on the Bellemont on the 31st of January I can confirm as you actually uh, already know it seems that this was nothing uh, this had nothing to do uh, with the Commission. We were not in the knowledge uh, of that. And it is not the first time, actually, you may remember uh, other instances uh, in which uh, third parties uh, of all kinds projected um, illumination messages uh, on uh, the Berlaymont. And this is something which is between uh, those th uh, stakeholders, those third parties, and the Belgian police, actually. So we have nothing to do uh, with that action or with the message that was uh, projected. As for the rest... Well, that's got to sting. Isn't that embarrassing? In there. Oh, no, no, no. Thin Lips sent a letter to Europe on the same day for the world to see and read. <laughs> it just begs belief. Kay is leaving the European Union this evening. Those are words I'd hoped I'd never have to write. I mean, 
Oh my days. Sorry. Those are words I had hoped I'd never have to write. Not least because an overwhelming majority of people in Scotland vote to remain. Ah, oh, here we go. Did not vote for this, sorry. <laughs> you know, I'd love to know how she'd get by if Scotland had voted to leave in 2016. <laughs> because as per usual, standard practice at this point, she wields out this bullshit 62% figure each and every time and never without fail. It's accompanied with the addition of overwhelming, I presume for dramatic effect or something like that. But it fails to include how that 62% came to be in the first place. Of course she does. She'd rather live in the fantasy world that her lying narrative has created. She gets to embark on this BS tour that she's on. She gets to justify her actions to date by proclaiming that she's only doing what she's doing because it's what Scotland voted for. ...is whether a Brexit vote will mean a second independence referendum. Well, here's what the SNP manifesto at the recent election said about that. The Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another referendum if there is a significant and material change in the circumstances that prevailed in 2014, such as Scotland being taken out of the European Union against our will. Now, I'm clear that if Scotland does indeed face that prospect of being taken out of Europe against our will, then that option is on the table. But to be clear, that situation only arises if Scotland votes remain next week. If Scotland votes to leave, then that premise for independence doesn't arise. If Scotland votes to leave, then that premise for independence doesn't arise. If Scotland votes to leave, then that premise for independence doesn't arise. But if you're basing your decision on what it means for independence, let me be very, very clear. The only sensible and logical vote is one for Scotland to remain in Europe. But to be clear, that situation only arises if Scotland votes remain next week. Not least because an overwhelming majority of people in Scotland did not vote for this. Yeah, telling people that if they voted to leave, then the premise for independence wouldn't arise. So they needed to vote to remain if they wanted independence. They needed to vote remain if they had independence in mind. You know what you were fucking doing? When that vote came back as 62%, that did not indicate 62% of the Scottish electorate wish to remain in the European Union. That quite clearly indicates that to some degree, what you said influenced that vote. Now, I don't know how many people voted that way, going by what you said, but neither do you. Neither does the SNP in general for that fucking matter. But it hasn't stopped them each and every time an election runs past. Every time. The same as the one just passed. The people of Scotland are like the children of teacher. Then she wins the election. What does she turn around and do? Well, the win quite clearly indicates support for Europe. That's all she does. She has clearly manipulated and lied time after time after time. But people just seem to be too feckless, too dim-witted to see it. Getting beyond the joke at this point. I'm not a unionist, but I'm not a halfway either. Her remarks were made during a speech at a Brussels-based think tank. The UK is not a unitary state, it's a voluntary union of nations. And one of those nations, Scotland, has expressed majority support time and again. For because of your deceit, because of your manipulation. But that always conveniently gets left out whenever she takes to her podium to chart this gaff, to try and spin this line. That she's only doing what she's doing because she's standing up for the people in Scotland. Scotland's so hard done by. The people of Scotland don't want this. Don't want what? What do the people of Scotland want? Because I don't think this cow knows exactly what the people of Scotland want. I know what she wants. It's rather evident. Has been for some time. Lie after lie after lie. She stands there and tries to make out that Scotland in 2014 voted to remain in the European, uh, the UK, sorry, because it was the only way to retain that EU membership. A lie that didn't exist realistically until towards the end of last year. Yes, it would have come up in conversation at the time, but it wasn't centre stage. And the expression goes, to be a good liar, you have to have a good memory. Well, that's where they've fallen short. Because the lie began about six or seven months into last year, with them proclaiming that that was promised. And we had no idea th that 
after we voted to remain in the UK. A referendum on the EU membership would be sprung on us. We had absolutely no idea. And after a wee while, they backtracked slightly to try and make out that we were told by just the people that wanted us to remain. Those in the Remain campaign told us that the best way, the only way to ensure that we could stay in Europe was to vote to remain in the UK. This, of course, all occurring at the same time as the people in Scotland having the knowledge that we would be, if we voted to stay in the UK, potentially subjected, would be potentially subjected, sorry, to an EU referendum in the future if David Cameron was re-elected. That's also exempt from these discussions. They tried to make out that the Unionist made us this promise. The Unionist reassured us and we all fell for it. And now we're being lied to. A promise, their promise I should say, has been broken. People voted to remain for whatever reasons. But there's a hell of a lot to suggest it was rigged. The fact of the matter is that the two elections after the fact clearly indicate that something ain't quite right with the way that referendum in 2014 came to pass. What was, however, fundamentally clear in that referendum, if Scotland had voted to leave, we would have been out of the European Union. This then lit bitch knew that. So think about it. Why did she specifically allow EU nationals the right to vote and come out and say a couple of months before the referendum that if we couldn't get back into Europe, these people could lose the right to stay in this country. You're not telling me that wouldn't have swayed the vote in itself. That, on top of the plethora of discrepancies and problems that occurred on the night, and of course, as I said, the subsequent election results after the fact. This cow knew back then that if we voted to leave, we would have been out of the EU, no guarantee of getting back in. This time round, she has duped the voters from day dot, and as time has progressed, she has conflated the two on purpose. Every time, whenever it was sporadically talked about in DRF2, in the wake of Brexit, there was no mention of immediately joining the EU. And over time, if you've had to endure as much shit as I have listening to this boot and the Rainbow Unicorn delegates, you'll notice a pattern has emerged. Over time, occasionally, just occasionally, they would include mention of an independent nation in the EU. Then as time progressed, that mention became more and more frequent, to a point now where you can't escape from the shite on display every day. The galvanting around Europe, as per usual, today in fact, with Barnier, bootlicking as per, and of course, the latest instalment from Nicola Finlips. Nicola Finlips makes a case for an independent Scotland in the EU. <laughs> Trans the transgender golem, Joanna Cherry on Question Time last night, made a similar comment. Beta Blackford says it all the time now. This little tirade about independence, then it's followed swiftly with an independent nation in the EU. <laughs> There's no sovereignty in the EU. I could pull up umpteen clips of thin lips saying as much. Pool sovereignty may or makes sense. <laughs> Fuck off. Socialist slash globalist cabal. Open the borders because we're promoting feminism and the LGBT. We're socially engineering the Scottish people to not have children because climate change. But by the way, we need to open the borders because diversity is our fucking strength. And the Scottish people, well, they're just a political community. Ain't that right, you thin lip?